Use a mer seti panamun take lot the third CESE was a sork on the third's eldest son and successor. Take lot the third ruled the first five years of his reign in a co-regency with his father and served previously as the high priest of Ammon at Thebes. He was previously thought to have ruled Egypt for only seven years until his thirteenth year was found on a stella from Armida in the Dakla oasis in 2005. Teklot III served the first five years of his reign as the junior co-regent to his father according to the evidence from Nile Key Text No. 14, which equates year 28 of Asorkon III to year 5 of Teklot III. He succeeded his father as king in the following year. Teklot is attested by several documents. A donation stellar from Gurub which calls him the first prophet of Amun Re, general and commander Teklot, a stone block from Heracleopolis which calls him the chief of Pesekum Hepera, and king's son by Tensai. Key text number 13 which equates year 5 of Teklot the third to year 28 of Asorkon the third and key text number 4 which records his year 6. Rain length. A graffito on the roof of the Temple of Konsu which records his year 7, was long believed to be his highest year date. However, in February 2005, a hieratic stella from year 13 of his reign was discovered by a University of Columbia archaeological expedition in the ruins of a temple at the Dakla Oasis. Their subsequent analysis of this dated document conclusively established this king's identity as Teklot III. This document, which measures between 42 to 48 centimeters wide, between 47 to 51 centimeters high, and between 10 to 16 centimeters thick, has now been published in JOL 39 by Dr. Olaf Kaper and Robert de Marais. Part of the abstract for their article is given below. The stella belongs to a group of finds documenting the temple of the god Thoth in the western part of the Dakla oasis, during the third, intermediate period. One block of temple decoration was found in the name of King Pachubastis, and the stella under discussion was set up in the temple to which this block belonged. The stella's principal text has five lines, in which the date of the stella is given as year 13 of Teklod III, as well as the name of the god Thoth of Sarwat, the local deity. The stella records a land donation to the temple on the part of the local governor, chief of a Libyan tribe, and it concludes with a list of 11 priests who are beneficiaries of this donation. Another donation stella erected by the same governor is known. From the temple of Seth in Mut, the governor mentioned here is Nesjehuti or Asduti who appears as the chief of the shaman Libyans in both the aforementioned year 13 stella of Teklot III and also so in the smaller Dakla Stella. The smaller Dakla Stella dates to year 24 of the Nubian king Piye. This could mean that Teklot III and Piye were near contemporaries during their respective reigns. It suggested that an important graffito at Wadi Gassis, which apparently links the god's wife Amina Disai to year 19 of a god's wife Shepanupet, is a synchronism between a Nubian ruler and an upper Egyptian Libyan king thereby equating year 12 of Shabaka to Teklot III. This graffito would have been carved prior to P. Year's Nubian conquest of Egypt in his 20th year, by which time both Teklot III and Rudamun had already died. However, new evidence on the Wadi Gassis graffito published by Claus German in 2006 has now redated the carving the famous Wadi Gassis graffito to the 25th dynastic Nubian period entirely, to year 12 of Shabaka and year 19 of Tahaka instead rather than to the 23rd dynastic Libyan era, and demonstrates that they instead pertain to Amina Disai and Shepanupet who respectively based on palygraphic and other evidence collated by Claus German at Karnak, rather than the Nubian Amina Disai and the Libyan Shepanupet I, daughter of Asorkon III. The god's wife Shepanupet II was Pierre's daughter and Tahaka's sister. German notes that no evidence from the innermost sanctuary of the chapel of Osiris Hecajet at Karnak shows Shepanupet I associated with Pierre's 
daughter, Amina Disai. The Wadi Gassis Graffito were written in two separate hand styles and the year date formulas for 12 and 19 were also written differently which suggests that they are unlikely to have been composed at the same date in time. This means that the year 19 date cannot be assigned to Teklot III and instead likely belongs to the Nubian king Tarhaka instead. Papyrus Berlin 3048 Frederick Peyraudo once noted that Teklot III likely ruled Egypt for a minimum of 14 years and was presumably the unknown year 19 Egyptian monarch. Recorded at Wadi Gassis, he based his interpretation on the evidence of Papyrus Berlin 3048, the only surviving administrative document on papyri for the entire Libyan period. This document, which is explicitly dated to year 14 of a Teklot Cese Mer Yaman, records a marriage contract which was witnessed by Vizier Hor and two royal treasurers. Bake Naaman and Jedman Trufank, respectively. The papyrus has traditionally been assigned to Teklot II since this ruler's highest date is his year 25, whereas Teklot III's highest unequivocal date was only thought to be his year 7. The author observed three pieces of evidence which, taken together, could have supported the attribution of this papyrus to Teklot III instead. Firstly, Frederick stressed that P. Berlin 3048 specifically mentions two royal treasurers. The fact that two treasurers served Pharaoh at the same time is inconsistent with the known facts for the period from the reign of Asorkon II until the early years of Asorkon III at Thebes when only a single person from one influential family served in this office. They were the descendants of Jedhon Shuru Fanki, who was the fourth prophet of Amun under Teklot I, Naktif Muti, Hazi Zasi and Jedhon Shuru Fanksi. Jedhon Shuru Fanke's son, Naktif Muti, first assumed the office of royal treasurer under Asorkon II, then Naktif Muti's son, Hazi Zasi, in turn succeeded him. Finally, Hazi Zasi's son, Jedhon Shuru Fangsi, occupied this office from the end of Teklot II's reign until the early years of Asorkon III's reign under whom he is attested. Since three direct descendants of one powerful family held the office of royal treasurer in the period around Teklot II's reign, it is unlikely that Jedman Chu Fang could have intervened in office as early as year 14 of Teklot II since he was not even connected to this family. Hence, the only other viable candidate for Jedman Chu Fang's master is Teklot III for whom no royal treasurer is known with certainty. Secondly, the vizier Hor who is mentioned in Papyrus Berlin 3048 was thought to be the same person who is named as the father of vizier Nebnetero in several Nubian and Saitira genealogical documents. This also makes it far more plausible that P. Berlin 3048 belongs to Teklot III since Hor would have served as vizier only a few years prior to the start of the Nubian dynasty in Egypt under Piye and would explain his son's later attestations in Nubian and site documents. In contrast, Teklot II died long before Piye conquered Egypt in his 20th year. Finally, the author noted that the royal treasurer Jedman Trufank, son of Arfan Mitu, lists his family genealogy on the opposite side of this papyrus. This specific list of his family tree is given. Hazi Zeta Bakenk Honsu to Hazi Zeta Arfan Mitai to Merk Honsu to Hazi Zeta to Hazi Zeta to Arfan Mitai to Jedman Tru Fang to Hazi Zeta. An Arfan Mute, a scribe of the chief treasurer, was buried under a sulk on the first. Frederick notes that an identification of this person with one of the listed predecessors of Jedman Tru Fang is certain here since this person functioned as a scribe of the treasury, a state office with which Jedman Chu Fang's family was intimately linked with. However, this Arfan Mit was probably Arfan Mutai rather than Arfan Mit II, Jedman Chu Fang's father. 
Since this person's son could not live beyond three family generations from the reign of Asorkon the first into year 14 of Teclot the second, as the author notes, Frederick also highlights the existence of the funerary stella of a certain Haziza, son of Merkhonsu, which was found at the Ram Esium and has been stylistically dated to the 9th century BC in the period around Teclot I or Asorkon II's reign to support his hypothesis that both Arf and Mutai and Merkhonsu were direct ancestors of Jedman Truufank. As an aside, the author believed that Nile key text number 45, which, according to Gerard S. Breckman in J88, records either year 17, 18 or 25 of an anonymous Theban king who ruled after Shoshenk III, may perhaps be ascribed to Teklot III based on the evidence of Papyrus Berlin, 3048. Since year 13 of Teclot III is now attested, it was possible that the year 14 date in this document also belongs to his reign, rather than Teclot II. However, Frederick Peyraudo has now since changed his views here and instead assigns this papyrus to Teclot II instead based on the mention of a certain Haziza, designated the fourth prophet of Ammon, in this document who is known to have served in office during King Teclot II's reign. This means that Teclot III's highest date is his 13th year. The fact that the chief of the shaman Libyans, Anes Jehuti, is attested in the same office in both year 13 of Teclot III and year 24 of Piye also shows that the interval between these two king's dates was close in time and it is unlikely that Teclot III ruled Egypt for 19 years since his brother Rudamun succeeded him at Thebes and Rudamun, in turn, was succeeded in this city by King Ini who ruled here for at least five years before Thebes fell permanently under Kushite control during Pierre's reign. Successo. Teclot III was the husband of Urshabast who is named as a king's daughter on the coffin of their son, Isorkon G. Another Urshabast appears to be a daughter of the king. He was ultimately succeeded in power by his younger brother Rudamun, who was another son of Isorkon III rather than by any of his three known sons. The prince, high priest Asorkon F. A. Prince Itazaman who is known from the stella of his grandson Ankhfenmut in Croydon Central Library and, finally, the second prophet of Ammon, Jedtahefink D. who is attested in statue to Bingen 1734 and in stella CG 41006 of his great-granddaughter Nacht Bastaru. This development suggests that Teclot III must have reached an advanced age to have outlived all of his sons since it was unusual for a brother of a king to assume the throne if the king still had a son who was living. Traditional Egyptian custom required that the son of a king directly succeed his father. Bibliography D.A. Aston and J.H. Taylor, The Family of Teclot III and the Theban 23rd Dynasty, in M.A. Leahy, Libya and Egypt c. 1300-750 B.C., London, School of Oriental and African Studies, Center of Near and Middle Eastern Studies, and the Society for Libyan Studies. Gerard Broekman, The Nile Level Records of the 22nd and 23rd Dynasties in Karnak. A Reconsideration of Their Chronological Order, J88, pp. 165-178. Aidan Dodson and Diane Hilton, The Complete Royal Families of Ancient Egypt, Thames and Hudson, J.P. Elias, a northern member of the Theban, 23rd Dynasty, Discussions in Egyptology 31, 57-67. K.A. Kitchen, The Third Intermediate Period in Egypt, 3rd Ed. Warmansty, 1996. Frédéric Peyraudo, Le Regne de Tacalot, Three Ailes des Buts de la Domination Kushite, GM 198 pp. 79-90.1. Olaf Caper and Robert de Marais, A Donation Stella in the Name of Take Club 3 from Amhida, Dakla Oasis, Jarberic Tex Oriente Lux 39, 2006 pp. 19-37.